Greetings and blessings to you all during this week of Christian unity. I'm Rev. Jay Hartley, the Regional Minister and President of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Arizona, which consists of 17 English-speaking and 8 Spanish-speaking congregations in the Metro Phoenix area, Tucson, Globe, and Prescott. I am delighted to share with you the Gospel reading for today from the Gospel of Mark, Chapter 6, known as the Feeding of the 5,000. A large crowd with a much longer attention span than most of us who live in a soundbite culture today listened to Jesus teach all day long. Late in the day, the disciples urged Jesus to stop because the crowd was going to be hungry. Jesus told the disciples to feed the crowds, but the disciples didn't think it was possible. How can we do that? Jesus said, well, how many loaves do you have? Five, they said, and two fish. Then Jesus had all the people sit down in groups of hundreds and groups of fifty. Then he took the loaves and the fish, and he looked up to heaven, and he blessed them, and he broke them, and he gave them to the crowds. He divided the two fish among them as well. And all ate and were filled. And the disciples took up twelve baskets of leftovers. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. Now while most of you know that story, you may not know that two chapters later Mark tells a very similar story. In Mark 8, Jesus has been teaching for three full days. And again he asks his disciples to feed a large crowd. Again, they don't think it's possible. And again, Jesus asked them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they say. So again, Jesus as the crowd sit down, and he takes the bread, gives thanks, breaks the loaves, and has the disciples distribute them. This time, over 4,000 people were fed, with seven baskets left over. Now why would Mark tell the same story, basically the same story, just two chapters later? And what do these stories have to teach us about Christian unity? A careful analysis shows that these stories were written to go together, to be a pair. They are similar, but different. The first story is set in Jewish territory, and it uses numbers and images that are important in Jewish history. Five loaves equal the five books of Moses. Twelve baskets left over are symbolic of the twelve tribes of Israel. The second story, however, takes place in Gentile land. And seven loaves and seven baskets of leftovers, seven is the number of completeness, of wholeness, or more universal number that fits with Mark's Gentile listeners. As we dig deeper, we find even more signs that one of these stories tells of Jesus' care for Jews, while the other tells of Jesus' care for Gentiles. Mark includes both stories to tell his readers there is no us and them in the Christian world. Jesus cares for all of us. God's love is for all of us. Don't you dare divide people. From each other. My friends, Mark didn't make a mistake and accidentally include the same story twice. One of the most fundamental reasons that Mark wrote his gospel was to preach Christian unity, to claim that Jesus unites us all, and we don't truly understand Jesus if we set our hearts against each other. Jesus invites us all to sit at his feet to break bread together, and to share in the abundance of God's inclusive love. I invite you to pray with me. O God of abundant love, in a nation divided, we pray for unity. In a place of hatred, we pray for love. In place of violence, we pray for peace. In place of historic and systematic racism. We pray for repentance, reparation, and reconciliation. 
Help us all, O oh God, embody your love the way Jesus did, sharing life with all, sharing meals and conversation with Roman centurions and Pharisees, with self-righteous tax collectors and self-proclaimed sinners. Help us to see the Imago Dei in each other, now and always. This we pray in dedication to following the one we call the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen.